Mr. Beast has a plan to become a billionaire, but it's his most dangerous idea yet. Jimmy Donaldson, better known online as Mr. Beast, is the content king of YouTube. Unless you've been living under a rock, chances are you've seen or heard his antics. By studying the algorithms and learning what retains an audience, he makes sure that every video of his goes viral. After conquering YouTube, then TikTok, he's expanded into new business ventures by monetizing his audience in a way that no other content creator has. Most notably, he's launched two major brands, Feastables, a chocolate company, and more impressively, a restaurant venture called Mr. Beast Burger. As it currently stands, he has an estimated $500 million net worth according to Forbes. Although his content creation is his main driver of wealth currently, these business ventures could catapult him to billionaire status, but not for the reason you might think. While Feastables and Mr. Beast Burger are both growing steadily in their own right, what he has teased for these two companies will be historic, but it's also an awful idea. Mr. Beast is contemplating an initial public offering. Before we get into the details of what that means, how it will make Mr. Beast an overnight billionaire, and its lasting effect on the brand forever, we need to rewind to how Mr. Beast went from making simple videos to running numerous multi-million dollar companies. Jimmy Donaldson started like any other YouTuber by making lots of videos that few people actually saw. Over time, he adapted by doing challenges so idiotic you couldn't help but watch, he gave out money to strangers, capturing heartfelt reactions, and created content so expensive to produce, no other creator could compete with. It seems in a matter of a few years, Jimmy went from being a nobody to the king of YouTube. What really separated Jimmy from other creators wasn't just how infectious he was to his audience, but actually how monetizable his personality was. While his audience is mostly on the younger side, many different generations love his channel as well. He doesn't swear, has no political stances, and appears extremely genuine. In the eyes of an advertiser, he's the holy grail. What caused Mr. Beast to go from a small channel to one of the biggest in only a few years isn't luck. It's a genius strategy of investing in yourself. He learned that if he took sponsorship money and gave it all away, his channel would get more views. This caused him to get more sponsorship money, which he would then give out again in a new video, repeating the cycle. As his channel grew, so did the sponsorship money. It was all exponential growth. Pretty soon, venture capitalists took notice of the growth potential of his channel. Jimmy even admits that he's had offers for a billion dollars in exchange for the Mr. Beast brand, but he's declined them. Like, there's people, not like official term sheets, but you know, like people that would actually like be able to afford it. Like, yeah, you know, a billion dollars if we could own the channel and the companies and stuff like that. Like, and I'm like, oh. That sounds enticing, but I don't know if I want to work for my YouTube channel. Jimmy doesn't accept the offer because he wants to maintain the integrity of his brand. What he doesn't tell you, however, is that according to sources from Axios, he is actively looking to raise around $150 million for his business at roughly a $1.5 billion valuation. So he actually is selling part of his company, though it's a minority share. He'd be using this $150 million to grow the companies faster, but at the cost of losing some ownership. This wouldn't even be the first time he's done this. Mr. Beast's ghost kitchen business, called Mr. Beast Burger, is a partnership with Virtual Dining Concepts LLC. The public doesn't know how much Mr. Beast actually owns of the company. His gamified chocolate company, Feastables, raised $5 million at a $50 million valuation from three venture capital firms. Why does that matter? It means that he isn't the sole owner of these companies, despite what the marketing makes you think. He has investors now, and they all want to have a big return on investment. For every video that Mr. Beast makes, he has to go bigger than the last. He's making a lot of money, but he's spending almost as much too. Actual cash? I'm probably the poorest person in this room because we just. I I doubt that. Money. Cash I, is grass, baby. Yeah, I doubt that. We well, we like if I make three, four million dollars a month that just spend it on videos the next month. We yeah. literally like have razor thin margins and just reinvest it all. That's wild. If his margins are truly razor thin, as he says, then that doesn't leave him a lot of room for poor performance. You could argue that this new 150 million being raised isn't actually to help grow the Mr. Beast brand, but rather it's to make his business more sustainable and to survive downturns. Like it or not, the reign of Mr. Beast will end eventually. You already see many copycat creators, and like everything else, popularity naturally declines with time. 
His current business growth model can be described as a snake eating its own tail. It's a plan that works for a bit, but not forever. You might not notice it, but the MrBeast video channel follows a formula. Not every video of his has the razor thin margins that he says it does. Each video of his is designed either for maximum growth or for profit, but usually not both. Videos such as Squid Game in real life cost millions to produce, but he received 350 million views for that, far above his average. He might not even profit from the video due to the high expenses, but the growth it provides to the channel is worth it. Now compare that with a video released 6 months later titled I Didn't Eat Food For 30 Days. It's basically a vlog, has very little expenses, and has 67 million views. This video didn't provide nearly as much growth, but it was way more profitable for them. It's clear the channel is mixing in these low cost videos to rake in profits. Eventually, this formula leaves Mr. Beast with only one choice. That is to become a regular corporation, and that's what they've done. They have a talent management company, a massive production facility, a huge amount of employees, as well as many investors. It's so much more complex than what the videos make it seem. These additional businesses Jimmy has launched is only the start of many more now that the Mr. Beast brand is a corporation. Expect the brand to start diversifying even more by making mobile games, a toy company, etc. At this point, they can plaster Jimmy's face on practically anything and it will sell. Okay, now that we have the background, we can talk about January 9th, 2023. Jimmy tweeted that he wants to do an IPO. That means for the first time, Mr. Beast could be offering shares of his company for you and I to purchase. In the same way that you can buy stocks of your favorite companies such as Microsoft or Apple, Feastables and Mr. Beast Burger could be trading on a stock exchange. This is a massive deal, and it's easily his most ambitious project he could do, but should he? To understand what he has to gain and lose by doing an initial public offering, you need to understand how IPOs work. At a very simplistic level, it means that a company becomes highly regulated and their financial statements become public information. In return, Mr. Beast's company gets to trade on a stock exchange, thereby getting a massive amount of money from public investors to grow their company. Because each share represents a percentage of Mr. Beast's company, in order to have shares available to purchase, he would need to give up a significant portion of his ownership of the company. Let's say hypothetically, Mr. Beast has 60% ownership of Feastables and Mr. Beast Burger before going public. In order to IPO, there has to be shares available to buy. Therefore, the company will issue new shares, which dilutes Mr. Beast's personal ownership down to 25%. Put simply, he's selling a significant part of his ownership of the company to you and I. The benefit of being publicly traded instead of selling these shares to a private investor is that Mr. Beast could sell a lot of shares at a much higher valuation. But when he sells off his shares, he has less ownership, which might affect his drive to work on these projects directly. Jimmy tweets that he wants to do an IPO so that he can share the wealth generated from these businesses. If you would be interested in buying shares of these companies, you need to realize it might not all be that great. Many trending IPOs often open at a stock price that values the company at a market cap that is far beyond its actual value. Given how popular Mr. Beast is, investment bankers would be drooling at the kind of IPO price they could put on this. If you invest at the IPO, you're gambling that despite the high valuation, one day your shares will be worth more. That day might never come. A couple years ago, in the meme stock frenzy of GameStop, the SPAC craze, and the general stock market seemingly only going up, a Mr. Beast IPO would have made a lot more sense. Overconfident retail investors would have been willing to pay anything to get their hands on a stock like this. In today's market, with high interest rates and inflation, investors might not be so eager anymore. Remember, if Mr. Beast does an IPO, his companies become highly regulated, the financial statements become public information, Jimmy becomes a billionaire, but he owns less of the company. The biggest issue with the IPO is that he would have the public as partial owners of his company. What's wrong with that? Well, a lot. That means that the public has a bigger say in what the company should and shouldn't do. Mr. Beast might want to go in one direction, but his investors might vote against it, thereby limiting his creative control. For someone like Mr. Beast that is trying to disrupt industries, going public is like chaining your ankle to a stake. It severely limits what he can do. Elon Musk took Twitter private because public investors wanted to see immediate changes that would result in the stock price going up in the short term. 
To systematically change the entire platform, it's a lot harder when you have public investors voting against it at every step because it may or may not work. The public investors will force Mr. Beast to squeeze as much profit from his companies as possible. His ghost kitchen model worked really well because it was disruptive, low cost, and relied on a strong brand. He didn't really have investors that were telling him no or suggesting to do something more traditional. That kind of fell apart once he opened his first physical location. Now he's directly competing against the big players like McDonald's and Wendy's. Both of those companies already trade on stock exchanges. That means we the public could easily compare the financials of McDonald's to Mr. Beast Burger. It would be easy to compare the value of owning one company over the other. Likely, Mr. Beast Burger would be way overvalued. Stockholders in Mr. Beast Burger wanting to see the value of their shares grow would then push the company to become more profitable by any means necessary. Such measures would likely cause significant suffering to Jimmy's creative vision. Do you think stockholders would find Mr. Beast giving away thousands of burgers for free amusing? How about Mr. Beast selling shares of Feastables so he can give tons of money away in an upcoming video? Absolutely not. Mr. Beast Burger and Feastables should be like Chick-fil-A, a company that never went public because they don't want to deal with outside pressure from investors or run the risk that they could lose control of the company down the road. It seems Mr. Beast is looking at the revenue of Feastables and Mr. Beast Burger as if it can somehow grow 100 times larger in the long term. At least Feastables has way less overhead cost and more profitable margins compared to Mr. Beast Burger. It might be a little delusional to think 30 years from now, people will be lining up for a Chandler style burger over the tried and true McDonald's Big Mac that has had their supply chain perfected for decades. Mr. Beast Burger on paper looks great when there's only one physical restaurant and a ghost kitchen model that thrive due to a pandemic and extreme current popularity of the owner. If they opened restaurants nationwide and continued on the ghost kitchen model as well, they would need to run it as a profit maximizing business first not as a quirky merch store for your favorite content creator. If Jimmy honestly believes his companies will grow to the size of McDonald's or compete with the Mars Chocolate Company, their product has to be at least as good as its competitors and it can't charge more. Kids grow up, eventually they'll be unwilling to overpay for mediocre chocolate bars or burgers just because their favorite YouTuber started it. Don't lie, that may be your boy, he may be cool, may be nice, these are wack as we're not eating those. Nobody goes, get me some of them feastable cookies I've been liking so much. Listen. <laughs> you know, God bless Mr. Beast. He's a good philanthropist. He does good for the world. Mm -hmm. Nice guy from what I know. This is, <laughs> cut it out. You don't make cookies, dude. <laughs> Keep giving away cars. If the main reason why Mr. Beast wants to go public in the first place is to share wealth with his fans, that's either a massive lie or he's just ignorant of the consequences of doing an IPO. If Sam Bankman frieds crypto fraud has taught us anything, you sometimes need to be suspicious of people's intention to grow wealth with the intention to give it away. Not to say Mr. Beast is in any way a fraudster, but he does seem like the type that would want to promote or pump his own stock price with genuine intentions of making his invested fans wealthier. He certainly has a platform to do so. But when there's a pump, eventually there's a dump. Unless Mr. Beast can somehow figure out a way for his brands to run without relying solely on his popularity, the stock price will eventually crumble. When that does, Jimmy won't be there to pay back your losses. In the long term, Jimmy has to have an airtight business model that can compete with the big players regardless of his fame. At the end of the day, Mr. Beast is two people. He's the lovable personality with good philanthropic intentions, but he's also a master businessman with his sights set on some high goals. If Mr. Beast wants to share his wealth with his fans, he should do it the way he always has. Doing an IPO is nothing more than a cash grab for him and his investors and it might be coming out of your pockets. Don't be fooled by rich men that promise richness for others. Despite the narrative that Mr. Beast got rich by giving money away, he still keeps more than he gives.